off to a slow start as everybody's trying to watch Perseverance land on Mars. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, Lee, are you in Austin? I saw somebody flash up that looked like a uh, Austin person earlier. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, you got power uh, and water or <laughs> how you holding up? Yeah, no, I, uh, boy, I tell you what, it's never been such a luxury to have like, a, a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm counting my, I'm counting my lucky star. I'm sitting, well, where am I? I've moved my... My, I have a portable desk at this point. There's no, there's no permanent home for me. It sort of depends on, That's yeah, crazy. where I can get the. So I, I tell you what, I've got, um, I'm just full of complaints. Like I've got, um, I've got endless things to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear a few. Come on, you'll yeah. feel better. You can share. <laughs> I tell you what, I, you know, one, you know, this is, this is not news to anyone, but just in case anyone needs a reminder. Well, I'll say it like this. So, so the roads are um, blocked. Um, so we're, we're out in the country just a little bit. We're, we're, in, we're in Austin. The roads are blocked because there's a big hill leading up to, up to the city, so to speak. And so, you know, lots of, lots of accidents. Uh, and so we're, we're on our own well water. Uh, and so naturally the water, the, that's frozen. So there's no, there's no running water. Uh, that's no different than some of the other, um, other folks around here. The electricity's in and out, so then you know naturally there's no there's no heating, so we're just running there. Anyway, long story short, like eventually you know a few days of that, and you kind of come down to uh, melting some snow, and um, right. you just everyone's aware of this. But you know, we've got a couple we've got a couple of dogs. Uh, as a reminder, yellow snow bad, good <laughs> snow, or white snow good. Just, uh, so. Oh man. Yeah. Anyway. Um, it, yeah, that's tough. Um, I'm here in Portland. Uh, uh, yeah, we, it's been a couple of, I think, three days of full icy roads and snow. Um, at like about uh, 200,000 folks lost power and no internet and water has been scarce. But luckily, the area I'm in, I didn't have any of these issues. But I could, I could see it's yeah. very tough. I mean, if the city is not prepared for that, uh, yeah, it's too for a prolonged period. It's really difficult. It's a bit, yeah, you know, just looking at the back, like, I'm not sure what to think of Jim's background at this point. It's sort of a, <laughs> like a slap in the face. That's because right? I love the snow. I, I live two hours south of that picture, but, you know, I'm a snow fan. I grew up in it, and I like driving up in it and skiing in it and playing in it, and I even like shoveling it, but oddly. <laughs> there's, some, there's some healthy exercise in there. There's some, yeah. Um, but yeah, to, to uh, um, Sunku's point, um, if the area that you're in wasn't made for the cold, then right. even just a little bit of it gets, yeah. Yeah. No snow plows coming to the rescue, right? No, oh, yeah. They, they turned off. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, very well. So this is great. This is like, hey, th this is the type of meeting that, uh, that I can get into. Like people have got webcams on, people are making corny jokes even laughing at the ones that I say, uh, this is nice. Like we, we're, we're, I think we kind of struggled to find a, get a, get a cadence going, but, but I'm seeing um, folks for the fourth time in a row. Um, and, and we're really just on the, on the, the cusp of some things, I think. Um, I, you know, Ken, Ken Owens is on the call as well. And, and Ken and I are overdue to catch up. Ken, um, uh, co-chairs the CNCF SIG network and um, he and I had co-chaired the CNCF networking working group as well uh, and we'd always like there are endless number of problems to solve in and around networking massive complex area and yet I don't know maybe maybe to our 
maybe pointing the finger back at us, like we've, I feel like we've had somewhat inconsistent topics. And so I've been excited about the service mesh working group and some of the initiatives within it because, because it gives us a cadence. It gives us some regularity to, to some of the things that we're doing. So it, we get a progression. Um, it's, it ends up being, the working group ends up being, I think that's a good label. It ends up being a little bit different than um, a CNCF, um, a SIG network meeting, which you know, in the past had done and continues to do quite important work. Um, some of the more important work about reviewing projects. So reviewing prog projects that are proposed for adoption, those that have been here and are coming up for that, their annual review. Um, and, you know, it, we get to meet new folks, we get to look at new projects, we get to opine on those. Um, but it feels somewhat administrative or it feels you know, a bit, bit of uh, peddling in place uh, slightly. That, that's not to do any... Um, not to do any disservice to the work that those projects do and how important it is for them to be adopted and go through that review, and it's critical. Uh, so anyway, working within so on some some long lived initiatives um, to me is nice. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about um, some of the same stuff that we've talked about before. We're going to um, lead off today with. Uh, a bit about, boy, if I can give it to my minutes, a bit about SIG Network. Hey, and I want trivial openly. I think you weren't on the talk call uh, the other day. I think you sent a note saying, hey, no power or something, but um, looks like they're renaming SIGs to tags, I think. If you saw that note? I did see or, a tag. It's up for vote anyways, I should say more specifically, but. You recollect a technical advisory group? Yeah, something yeah, I will say something like that. Um, I'll, I'll personally say, as someone who's trying to sort of learn and navigate the world of CNCF, you know, I thought I understood SIGs till someone said, "Oh, by the way, there's Kubernetes SIGs too," and that sort of threw me for a whole loop. When the Kubernetes guys say SIGs, they talk about theirs as opposed to CNCF one. So I think differentiation there for me will be helpful. So. Um, it'll mean the change for folks that have been involved in the CNCF SIGs for a while, but I think that's navigable. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I think I would I'd cast my vote to change. I think I had uh, been vocal when we first named the SIGs SIGs uh, uh, on that particular point, in part because the Kubernetes SIG network is a fair like it is perpetually the case that I go to speak to someone about CNCF SIG network and they think I'm talking about. Um, Kubernetes SIG network. Right. Um, well, fair enough. So there's uh, there's one um, quick note about um, oh, it is out for uh, now's the good time for uh, a call for topics, by the way, if people have others. Um, so th there is an outstanding discussion on ambassador and um, whether or not its name would change to um, whether or not its name would change. I, I didn't, you know, dig into this last time we met. Um, to, to make a quick remark, I'll say that there are other projects, or it's interesting to me the dis. The CNCF and, and the, the process, like you would imagine um, for any organization, evolves over time. And so um, there have been other examples of hard to differentiate um, corporate entities and projects themselves uh, that are out there. And whether that was the name or just the way that the projects are governed, um, I think it's, it's interesting to see that I think, I think we're, there's just continued maturity in terms of like calling out ambassador in its name. And I hope that it doesn't mean that, that projects are being treated unfairly from projects before and the, and what were they and what they were held to. So anyway, just a, a side comment. So the crux of the the core of what I wanted um, for us to dive in today to today is to to one recall from from last time that we met we ended up talking about I think it was mostly on service service mesh patterns uh, we got a demo from um, about we got an introduction to open application model 
uh, ohm and how you can take a service mesh pattern, the, the six or so that we've been looking at, and articulate those in a YAML file, in an ohm compatible YAML file. So I'm just kind of re recapping from last week. You could take that and hand that to uh, a service mesh manager like Meshery specifically, have it um, implement that pattern. Uh, in this case, I think the demo was a canary, uh, canary release, we're releasing a canary. And how that service mesh pattern um, and ohm interface with service mesh performance specification and service mesh interface specification. So, so with that context, um, today we've got some discussions on Get Nighthawk. Um, so we've introduced the project in the past. We've kind of walked through the, the goals of the project. And I think everyone that's on has had a bit of an introduction to it, but you'll please interrupt if, if you've got questions as we dig into Get Nighthawk. I wanted to, it's always my goal not to talk on uh, meetings like these. Um, and so I think we're gonna be successful in that today. There's a, a couple of folks who've been working on Get Nighthawk. Brief recap on Get Nighthawk, it's, it's to formalize a, dis, a few distributions of Nighthawk as a performance characterization tool. Nighthawk is a load generator um, born of the Envoy project. And it isn't well, we wanna help get that into people's hands. I um, mean, that's part of the goal of Get Nighthawk. There's a couple of other goals that part of the goal is to make Nighthawk compatible with the service mesh performance specification. And through its integration with Meshery, um, Nighthawk will be SMP compatible. Um, yeah, those are some- Lee, just I, I guess the question maybe out of ignorance, when you say load generator, the same as packet generator or something different based on workloads? Nope, same. Okay. Yeah, I can't tell you. I've already seen like in my little world, five different similar packet generation open source projects. <laughs> DPDK is packet gen, there's like moon gen and um, the FIDO FD.io guys have one. I can't remember the name of theirs. It seems like everybody reinvents the wheel on a regular basis. Not sure whether that's out of uh, a need for origination, a lack of understanding of options or specific elements, but whatever. Yeah, I guess the major difference, uh, Jim, here is um, is looking at the HTTP packets uh, based okay. on like, HTTP 1.1 standard or HTTP 2. Okay. Uh, it doesn't necessarily dig into the packets per second or um, uh, like the layer three stats, okay. which okay. Uh, which the most of the other traffic generators looking right. at. So that's one thing that um, we've been discussing with Otto, uh, who's the maintainer of Nighthawk. Um, there's a little bit of disconnect between L2, L3, um, you know, how these are kind of standards. There's ARC 2544 versus what L7 tools kind of generate. Right. Uh, so yeah, we had a, we have a parallel discussion with Otto there um, to see how we can um, bridge the gap between these two or make okay. sure they're, they both are in sync, essentially. All right. Thank you. Some load generators are you know, are run sort of in a, in a closed loop mode. Others are capable of running in an open loop mode, um, which is to say the open loop ones are, I don't know how to paraphrase it, but um, discourteous in how they, how they just blast, they just blast. Like a UDP it. fashion sort of, or? Yep, they don't wait for the, right. they're not polite about it. Or they, they don't wait for the response back to, and, um, that there's another one of those different some of the differences um, or I, I can imagine the need for different load generators by way of what language they're written in and, and um, what SDKs are available to you know programmatically interface with the load generators um, that that's a yeah, it, it, there's actually a, an analysis written about two load generators that are within the service mesh wheelhouse uh, Fortio and well, and WRK and um, Nighthawk, and a little bit about why it is that Nighthawk, I, I believe if Otto was here, I think he, uh, why Nighthawk was written and Fortio wasn't reused. Differences in language choice, differences in how they perform. That's right. So 
So, um, so of the, so, so, and actually, um, so do, do you, did you have any, any more to add on that? Or like in your mind, were those, dis where did those discussions leave off in terms of lower layer, but better lower layer support? Yeah. Um, so recently, um, so we have, um, uh, Google Doc uh, sheet um, or Google Doc essentially like um, uh, Otto had written down some of the pointers as to what we could work on. Uh, we hadn't made a lot of progress there yet because uh, I've been chasing some customer issue. I hadn't really gotten a chance to work on that, but he did forward um, another uh, uh, doc, Google Doc that's being, um, I think um, uh, most folks from Envoy community are looking at you know, what, what, um, what's a good, set of features required for load generation uh, for Nighthawk perspective. Um, and as I could forward that Google Doc here, uh, but yeah, that one goes through more details as to uh, what's required in, in Nighthawk, uh, but the features to be added, uh, gaps and things like that. Uh, and I see folks from many different companies participating there. Um, yeah, that's where we are. Uh, we hopefully make some progress uh, next week. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If that, if you do have a link to that Google Doc, we'll. Yeah. I'll send it to you right now here. Um, so is, okay. Is Vinayak, um, Ut Utkarsh is here. Jim is here. Derek is here. Okay. We may, I don't know that we've got a representative for the Get Nighthawk website, but I'll, I'll pitch it. I'm um, on this, um, Abhishek and uh, Dina, do you guys want to, do you guys want to speak to, well, how we're, how distributions of Nighthawk are being created? Uh, sure, I'll, oh, are you presenting it? Good. So we've put up this doc uh, while we initiated this project to track all the plan of action and uh, sort of all the updates in here so that everyone are aware of it. Uh, so looking at that, we uh, the first step that we followed or while proceeding with the project is that uh, we were able to sort of build the project individually, uh, but meaning Nighthawk as a project has several components uh, like the client, uh, the gRPC server that runs or, uh, or even on the test server. So we were able to uh, build them individually and publish them as an artifact right now manually. So, uh, Having that accomplished, uh, we put up a list of plan of actions that we are moving ahead for what we're going to do about automating this process. And uh, here we go, like basically this, this is exactly the uh, list or a plan of actions that we have in mind. Uh, so the the main idea is to play, with, play around with a couple of GitHub actions. Uh, we, we would work on uh, probably starting with the custom action and then going about uh, building the CLI with different serial architectures and operating systems. Uh, we are currently aiming on builds, which would be stable and nightly. Uh, but yeah, like basically this is, this is the overview of what uh, the current progress of this project is and moving at hopefully uh, the ones the ones that you see here would be actually demoable the next time uh, yeah that's that's majorly the update around the project i'm curious if... yeah i'm um... Thank you. I'm curious if anyone has a perspective on uh, which of the operating systems and which of the package managers are uh, might be more higher in priority than the next. Uh, so currently we are uh, targeting two operating systems, which are Linux and macOS. Uh, when it comes to Linux, uh, we are, and yeah, obviously there is Docker image published that is Kind of separate from these two uh, individual uh, native builds, uh, but yeah, like when we talk about Linux distributions, we are targeting YUM and APT repository.
currently. Uh, they are they have the highest priority and uh, uh, parallelly we have for Mac OS uh, the homebrew which is the most famous homebrew and uh, uh, scoop which is an optional but yeah the target is that homebrew would be the uh, p1 priority one and uh, and yeah uh, and a docker image build which would uh, which would be linux based uh, yeah like these are the only ones that gotcha. have the topmost priority gotcha yeah i think internally to be um, primarily prioritize ubuntu and centos uh, most of our tests are based on that and yum and yapt um, uh, those are the things we care about too. Um, I think CentOS is changing, the hat is changing the way CentOS is uh, distributed going ahead or released instead of a full blown release. Um, it's doing, uh, I think, a rolling update or I have to check. Um, so it's the release model is changing, but yeah, maybe that's something to worry about in the future. But yeah, for now, so it's good to go. Okay, yeah. Nice. Okay. We have some kind of... um, so one thing Otto was mentioning was uh, performance CI for using Nighthawk. Um, so if I understand right, this uh, effort, the difference with the get Nighthawk effort is more in terms of um, enabling Nighthawk as a like a commodity tool to be, uh, or a package tool that one could leverage using Yammer app. Is, is, or, or are you also looking to establish um, a CI where you could continuously run the performance tests uh, of on Y, for example. Yeah, um, both. Um, the, the yeah, this, that's a, thanks for asking. So uh, it's a little bit confused, I think, that, that there are. I mean, to, to your to your question, that there are a couple of highly related efforts going on, and when you step back and look at them all, it makes a lot of sense. Um, there's. Uh, like in context, okay, hmm. in context of service mesh performance, that specification, part of the goals of that initiative are to help um, the world understand um, different performance characteristics of service meshes. In part, why Nighthawk, you know, Nighthawk and load generators are of interest is to be able to answer people's questions about what to expect in terms of certain overhead or in terms of certain environments or performance. Um, like a very specific performance overhead they might get from invoking a particular function or, um, and so, so there's a part of a, a standard to help hopefully bring forth some common tooling to hopefully bring forth that common tooling sort of leans into something like get Nighthawk, which um, so Nighthawk being very useful and, and somewhat extensible. So like to, yeah, but kind of hard to build and not necessarily well promoted or it doesn't have its own website. Like um, that those are part of the, goals of, of Get Nighthawk. P part of both of those projects, SMP and Get Nighthawk, um, get reinforced with, like, like to Jim's earlier point about there being you know, a litany of different load generators available. One of the challenges that I have always found is that when you do want to go run a, um, a series of tests that it often ends up being some um, bespoke test harnesses and test framework and test environment and the lab and all the and like basically end up devoting one or two people or, or more to, to to just this you know, to performance engineering right to just this type of and when universally as as service meshes gain in popularity people every time i talk to them they have this question around um what's the overhead and how do i manage that and what how do i know if i'm running things well and 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 if you talk to any of the individual projects, they'll disagree or they'll say this one's better or that one does this like that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge um, for people to understand it. So bringing forth a standard specification, enabling people with easy to access tooling, and then more than just um, getting Nighthawk into their hands, which, which is great, but it also means that people will still need to build some, what I would consider as bespoke tooling around um, Get Nighthawk for scheduling when it's gonna run, running the same tests consistently, tracking the, the feedback and the reports, comparing the uh, performance over time. Um, like the, then that, that's in part how uh, Meshery comes to bear in terms of facilitating those things. 
standing, you know, deploying your service mesh, deploying your applications, scheduling and running the, um, the load tests in a, either in an inter interactive way in which people can go look at and examine reports or yes, I think is the short answer to your question, Sunku. It's sort of yes to both. They're like, yes, um, you would, part of the goal of Get, Get Nighthawk is to, through, the, through integration with Meshery, is to allow people to put this into their pipelines. And by people, I mean all, all of the users, but also the service mesh projects themselves, as they go to integrate Get Nighthawk and, and Meshery into their pipeline, that, and they go to use a standard, uh, a common method of SMP, service mesh performance, as a spec for describing what they're testing and the uh, sort of a standardized reporting back of the, the, the performance of those, you know, of their environment, of their right. release to release. Like when you, when you step back and sort of look at all those initiatives and you look across, like, oh, you know. Yeah, oh. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. Um, I think that uh, thanks for that uh, big picture kind of view. And one other thing Otto was mentioning was um, looking to build some performance uh, CI for Envoy using Nighthawk. So I was curious if both go hand in hand. Looks like you know kind of align. Um, uh, so one thing I was mentioning to Otto also was um, there's a CNCF test bed, um available. I think uh, right, so that to run some of these testing. Uh, I'm not sure if you're leveraging uh, or looking in the planning in the future to leverage running these test performance tests on the test bed. I think you've almost covered the, uh, Sunku, you're, you're <laughs> I chuckled because uh, y yes, again, is the short answer. I was going to kind of go right. into the longer kind of when you look at like, hey, hey, what is this working group and what are we all trying to accomplish? Or, you know, what are those, those things? It, it, um, there's a few initiatives that, that get broken down. So one of those is, yeah, very much so that it's been, um, we've had access to the cluster for a long time to do these particular tests. Part of our challenge in going and actually running the tests and publishing res some results. So that's one of the things that, that it, all of you here and or others that aren't here, like for my part, I'm very motivated to go, to go do that. We haven't done it in the past because A, we don't know, want to get it wrong and make an arse out of ourselves and an arse out of, you know, all of the other meshes. Um, B, without easy to access tooling and kind of without having to write a bunch of bespoke, kind of going, you know, writing bespoke tooling to go run these, like without having a meshery there to be able to just um, go over to an empty set of, you know, 20 servers or so or, or however many in the lab and, and take a pattern file that says, well, I'd like to take this mesh or this mesh or this mesh under this config, this config, this config, and uh, I'm using this app or this app or this app. And I'd like to run this action, this service mesh action. So last, last time we met the action was a canary release, be able to describe that in a YAML file, pass it to Meshery CTO, so you can you know, schedule it or so you can invoke it programmatically and have Meshery deploy the, you know, assuming that Kubernetes is present on those servers, Deploy the mesh, deploy the app, invoke the action, um, whatever, what, invoke the configuration of that mesh. In turn, do get get Nighthawk, like um, mm -hmm. spin up at least one or maybe multiple instances of Nighthawk. Hit the endpoints, gather the load back from Nighthawk, present it, and then like all of that work. Too much for us. Like it's been about a year now that I've been saying pretty much what you just said, which is like, hey, wait a second. There's a great resource sitting here. There's a common question a lot of people have. Are, aren't, we, aren't we in a working group? Aren't we in an environment in which we're positioned to help to, to provide that information to people? Right. And I think we're on the cut, we're like basically right at the point by which, okay, going off and doing that effort isn't a bunch of throwaway work. Like there's some repeat, some tooling that you can use to make those tests repeatable and share and, and in a fair way, like a service mesh performance. Like, thank you, Jim. Yeah, I, yeah, you, you enjoy that snow. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, and, and even, even to do it fairly, right? Because um, so, so we've been around, we've talked to every single service mesh that's out there and one that is yet to be announced. Like there's, there's one, I don't, I don't know when they're gonna announce, but um, 
to, to be able to say, well, hey, like, hey, there's a specification here. You, you're all welcome to, to comment on it and make sure that it's fair. like, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. on it. Absolutely, yeah, that's a really good start, a good question, yeah, thank you. And, um, and so I don't mean to, to, to prey on you in this meeting, but Sunku, you're very much needed in that. Like, like I, um, we, I, I just don't have the, uh, for, for speaking for my part, like I'm, I'm tapped out, but I so much want for us to do that. And we're so, so yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, if there is um, uh, an SMP, I went through the site, um, saw the GitHub, but there is a specification in the works. Um, and please do include the link in the minutes when possible. Uh, so they can uh, begin. Oh, nice. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, that might be good to tee that up for like the next time that we meet as well as to like, hey, what let's let's do a let's do a spec review where I mean we'll we'll get you that info in the meantime, but to do a spec sure. review to do a walkthrough. Absolutely. Because it because it's missing some things. I guess you know, like it's a it, it's good, but there's more that needs to be done. Sure. Okay. So Abhishek, thank you for the update on. So we've had progress. So Nighthawk is being built, built locally. You've got a collection of folks here, Adina, uh, Rodolfo, who are going to go off and spend some time in GitHub workflows, GitHub action workflows. Okay. We've also had, I, um, there were a few folks who I think who are going to be able to join today, but um, couldn't make it. They've been working on the website for um, Get Nighthawk. And in part to um, Sunku's question, like given that yeah, this is something I'll, I think I pr um, planted a seed in Otto's mind last time we met was just this question of, well, since Nighthawk doesn't have a project site, is get Nighthawk, like, it, it, does that become the project site? And um, um, irrespective, there's a, a collection of folks who are working on under this domain to, to bring forth uh, some, uh, some designs that have been made. There's a link to the designs here. Um, hopefully everybody that wants to get to it can. I'm, I, I don't think I'm gonna be successful loading it at the moment, but um, simple static site. This is the scope and structure of the site. There's not a lot to show. I think if you visit the URL, um, it's gonna be pretty barren. Um, there's some open source contributors that are spending what time that they can do, doing a good job. But, um, one other item on here, um, and that is that there've been a couple of, I think about three logos drafted as possible logos for Get Nighthawk. And those need to be, those three and maybe more need to be presented to you all for a vote. So we need to open up a poll and have people vote and or suggest that a redesign be done or um, yeah uh, what else did we have so um, if you're looking for an op uh, item open items I missed to ask this in, in the beginning um, with respect to the uh, some of the work that you mentioned in the last call, uh, that you're working with some universities on some of the service mesh um, uh, performance aspects or test aspects. Uh, so if you, if possible, uh, could provide some more details as to what's going on there, it would be helpful. Uh, great question. And it's also, um, <laughs> well, we've done, yep. Um, <laughs> how, do I, how do I try to be concise here? It's again, kind of part of the bigger picture is, or like uh, there's some specific items that, that we're um, engaged with a couple, a couple of universities on, but really Sunku actually use again, specifically being here or, and it could be Ken or it could be um, Derek or, but it has to be more people than me. Cause I'm just, I'm, it is, uh, we need a little bit of a, 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 a new kickstart with some of them. So there's, there's two professors, um, one at NITK, NIT, and the, the K part, I'm gonna mispronounce. Um, Abhishek, do you recollect? But yeah, it's- um, Karakpur, probably. 
I want to say that, but it, it's not Kung Kung Poor. Oh, it's, uh, it's Sulakkan. So I actually wrote it down, but now I don't have the the paper. So there were two university, one from Texas and one from India, right? One from Calcutta. I think. Uh, it's NIT Suratkal, right? If I'm not wrong. Yep. Sorry, NITK. Um, TK. I um, mean, this is the, the this particular professor here, um, Mohit um, Talayani. So NIT Kankara, Kanak yeah, Karnataka, okay. And uh, for some reason, his page isn't coming up. You know, I'd be happy to kind of reach out. You know, if you want to coordinate, who should reach out to which which university? Right, we can definitely get that going. Thank you, Ken. There's another one as well. Um, uh, Sorry, guys, I feel like I'm so disorganized. Just there's so much. So there's there's this um, professor, super nice individual. Um, his areas of interest are um, right within the same you know, net, kind of networking space. You can see some of the prior research that he's done. Um, and he's there's a student or two that we've been engaged with who've been studying and kind of learning Nighthawk and part of it's, um, we're, we're pretty interested in its adaptive. Anyway, there's a, there's a few different things I think that we can go off and accomplish. And by we, I don't, I mean, I mean, Ken and I mean, all the folks on this call. Um, that, and they've been written down. Um, some of these are a year old and they're writing in how they've been written down, which is why when Sunku says, hey, do you have a link to it? It's like, yeah, there's a link there. It's dated, like, or it needs to be updated. But irrespective, we'll, we'll send you a, a couple of links about the projects that we've um, discussed with them, introduce you to these folks. There's an, uh, a professor from not Cornell. It's, I think it's NYU. Um, I owe him a response. He said that he wants to engage on SMP. And in my mind, like, again, like SMP, Meshery, Nighthawk, Get Nighthawk, Nighthawk, um, the patterns, the CNCF lab, like all very beautifully intertwine in terms of, or overlap and intertwine. So even though he said he wanted to engage in SMP, I think, um, He's open to, I don't remember his name, honestly. One of his students grabbed some WebAssembly filters that people in the layer five community had written in Rust. One of his students grabbed them and rewrote them in C++. So that they're, they're and hence part of our interaction. So now that I've totally digressed this, I think that there's two things for us to cover that will help us get organized and help empower Ken and Sunku. Um, Abhishek and Adina to move some of this forward. So one is that we, we, we now have a service mesh working group mailing list. So if you did not receive an invitation or if you did, but you weren't sure what it was about, um, I encourage you to subscribe because we'll, we'll try to, this is a good way for us to sync up between the two weeks that we meet. So there's a link in the meeting minutes. The second thing that we should make sure that we discuss is um, Ken was noting that there's, we, we've consistently done a SIG network deep dive, introduction and deep dive at KubeCons. And that the upcoming KubeCon has, we need to go ahead and reserve our spot, I think today. And so, Ken, um, Ken, uh, yes, if you, if you don't mind the, really there's just a, this generic description of what that talk is. And the, the one from the last KubeCon or the KubeCon before, that will, it's generic enough that it'll totally work and can reserve our spot. Yep, I'll, I'll submit it today. Oh, thank you, thank you. No problem. Yeah, on, on that topic, um, Otto and I submitted a, um, uh, at, um, abstract for service meshcon in terms of um, you know, learnings from benchmarking or performance testing some of the meshes. Um, I mean, our work has been on why, but yeah, so I uh, figured we'd share some of the common learnings. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, we should probably like sign up for that service meshcon as well, just to kind of That's make right, sure yeah. they're aware of the SIG and then make sure that. Um, 
you know, we can bring in some of those um, interesting projects into our discussions. No, no doubt. Um, actually, yeah, until last week, it was, sorry. Yeah, until last week, it was only 10 bucks to register KubeCon and 24 um, uh, service mesh con, but I, I know the price now. Do you, oh, I don't wow. think they changed the price on the, the service mesh company, you know, like the, the, I guess, day zero events, they call them, but they might. I I, um, I have the fortunate benefit of being a, a, a end user, so I get, I don't have to pay for, for cute cons, but I do have to pay for the service mesh con, so I have to kind of factor that in. But There was no polite way of mentioning that, was there, Ken? It was just kind of. Uh, no, I just had to quantify, quantify it with being the, an end user versus, you know, a vendor. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ken, uh, thanks for raising that up, actually. Um, it had been suggested that this SIG uh, potentially participate in the program committee uh, for something like Service Mesh Con, which, which I think makes a lot of sense. The same thing had been suggested for the security, Cloud Native Security Day, the Cloud Native... Yeah. Completely agree. Makes a lot of sense. Um, Ken, there, there had been there, there's two other topics that come to mind that um, that I'd that I'd love to see us do, and, and is something that I think that that it would take an individual like you to um, to 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 force us to do it, uh, and that is that is we've been talking about um, the the. CNCF polls that go out that, that inquire about usage of certain technologies yep. and how um, and how woefully underdone the service mesh um, poll was. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, yeah, I wonder if we, I wonder if we. And I did bring that up with Cheryl that she needs to like run that by us because it, it did not come across very well. Yeah, I mean, it just like some of the choices weren't even service meshes. And so it's just like. Right. Um, I think they get in too big of a hurry sometimes to just publish these polls, but they're not, they're not very useful when they do that. Yeah, it, it adds to the confusion, I think. Um, I, yeah, I'd like to see us um, not, not do an end user radar, but do a, and, and collaborate with Cheryl if, if she'd like to, but to do a, or maybe if the if the end user radar for service mesh is coming up is to to collaborate on that. Um, yeah, definitely. I'll I'll make sure to to ping her on that again. So I, I have asked her a couple of times to include the SIGs because it's it um, even if if it's an end user poll, you still want to have like the right choices in there and the right questions being asked that would be helpful to the SIG. It shouldn't just be you know, what are end users in general doing in this space? It needs to be a little more guided. Yeah. That's some of the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I had listened in on the last um, service mesh you, um, end user meeting and I forget the name of the individual, but he, he was trying to figure out if the proposal for multi-cluster in Istio was really going to work for people in the way that they namespace their Kubernetes clusters, and and it wasn't going to work for him because he uses or their organization uses the same, literally the same name for the namespaces across every Kubernetes cluster, and the multi-cluster design for Istio was that they had those name the namespaces had to be globally unique, and so it, it's that kind of a thing. To your point, Ken, that I think would be very helpful to. Well, getting that feedback back to the projects themselves, just some of those best practices. One one other item here, IstioCon is next week. By the way, that there's a um, we'll we'll be giving a a two and a half hour workshop on Istio. We'll use Meshri to help teach people, um, which implicitly we'll use Nighthawk, and at some point we'll be using Get Nighthawk. Um, it'll be used showing people, introducing people to SMP. So to, to Ken's point about like, you know, another venue for introducing 
some of these works to people at Service Mesh Con, um, Istio Con, for sure. Sunku, did do you recall? Did the CFP come back with um, the the talk being accepted, or have you guys heard back yet? Uh, uh, no, I think um, March uh, second week or third week of March is when we we'll hear back from them. Uh, deadline just ended. Uh, actually, deadline is tomorrow for CFP. And okay. yeah, no next month. Okay, so Ken has this one. Very good. Can also also will socialize. Sounds like Ken, you'll end up socializing again with. Um, you'll test the waters with uh, Cheryl. If if uh, Ken, if she doesn't come back, I, I'd I'd like to help you, help you if I can suggest it like this. I'd like to help you organize a, a poll, get some some questions down, and and see if we can get a, a really accurate one going on. Okay, so we got about about ten minutes left. If we if we speak toward, if we turn an eye toward next week or the agenda in a couple of weeks, um, doing an S and P review in terms of where that specification is at and what open holes it has. It sounds like that. Um, so this one, um, so sorry, and the topic that we started uh, the university discussion. Um, and I'd like to participate there, see what we can do, but uh, is there um, uh, like a common, um, not, not necessarily Google Doc, but a, a common place where ideas are being discussed or uh, shared as to what, what's the, what are the things could be done or being explored or, or interest from the university side? Uh, is there a place, common place for this discussion? It has been to, to date, not by design, but just by where the activity has been and kind of where we've gotten in touch with people. It has been um, in this Slack here. It, there's a performance channel and a WebAssembly channel. Um, we can pull those discussions out. Like I very much so desire to have those discussions coming into here, um, but we don't have a regular meeting, meeting cadence on those. I'm hopeful for this to be that. It, the, the, timing of when we have this call is, is tough for some of those folks. But um, Sunku, yeah, I think be, being getting vocal there to start. And then Sunku, I, I'd like to want to find a time with you to get some of these uh, a bit more better, just, you know, better described on paper, um, get uh, S&P introduced to you some more, some you know, better. Yeah, so I think Mirtika and I replied. So tomorrow we could uh, sync up. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, miss, are we missing anything here, or, or do we? Are we going to get some time back? Uh, yeah, just about to say on, on this topic, the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why I'm curious about this, uh, especially the performance is, um, so I've been working on characterizing Envoy um, on bare metal. And what we realized is um, not just the tool, but there are so many combinations of how we could, um, you know, slice and dice the tests uh, and understand the performance of Envoy in terms of scaling, in terms of connections or latencies. Uh, whatever the case might be. And this is just uh, uh, um, leveraging Envoy Sandbox. Um, and also that's published on Envoy website and nothing complex, right? just the Docker containers. And then as we get into Kubernetes environment, um, you know, it, it gets much more complex with services and you know, a number of sidecars and whatnot. So what I realized um, it's too much for uh, you know, one or two sort of people to kind of uh, do a comprehensive study right so even though we prioritize the cases that we need but it's just a lot of variations of what could be done uh, definitely i mean in terms of automating this um to, to what you are leaded with mesh and smb and uh, in a ci test bed uh, that would help uh, but yeah so what we realize is uh, this can be looked at different angles uh, changing kernel parameters changing l2 l3 um, leveraging hardware offloads um, and whatnot so that's one of the reasons to see if, um, if there's, if anyone else is interested to collaborate in some of these areas, uh, we could look at 
um, some of the hardware offload parts and uh, collaborate on some of the work that we are doing uh, to see how uh, you know so we can enhance uh, mesh performance overall. Right, uh, so that's one of the goals that we have. Figure out that uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to. Uh... You, you could, yeah. You, you welcome to my nightmare for the last uh, yeah. year. I say, I say sure. mind you, but, but which is like, yeah. I've said it on stage a few different times. Like, hey, people kept asking this question, so we won't have to try to answer it. And then, little did we realize, like, what a nightmare performance engineering it, or like just the the thousand, the millions of permutations of um, one of the talks that was given at actually with the university, um, a PhD candidate here at UT Austin was. Um, was very much so just on like trying to like explicitly identify the cost of a given service mesh function. Like w w what does it cost to do? I'll say some boring thing. Like what does it cost to do a round robin or something? Like, that's kind of boring, mm -hmm. but there's a bunch of service mesh specific things that are. Cool. Um, there's an interesting, Sunku, one, one of the things like as we go to wrap up here um, that I've heard from people from time to time. And I think the first time I heard it was from it was a year and a half ago from the uh, AWS App Mesh product manager uh, when I was introducing some of these concepts to him in, in his, you know, in context of measuring the performance of the mesh and measuring the perform, you know, whether or not App Mesh wanted to participate and kind of go through this with us. And I think his perspective was, well, hey, so, you know, we're an Envoy based data plane. Um, so, like, you know, it's just going to be the same as anyone else who's using Envoy as a data plane. And I, we ran out of time for me to articulate, verbalize to him that, like, I, I think that that's a, um, a myopic viewpoint or a naive viewpoint that, like, this was actually before Istio had refactored in 1.6 to move all the telemetry. Like, hey, the way you design your control plane has a big effect on how the data plane works and kind of vice versa. And, and just because you're using Envoy inside doesn't mean that you're, th that the performance necessarily looks anything like a, a different service mesh that's also using that same data plane. Right. Now that I totally led the question, my question to you is gonna be, you know, do you, am I, am I off in that perspective or do you, do you no, I agree. Um, definitely, uh, you know. So there, uh, we have at least I haven't done a lot of analysis on control plane yet. Uh, but what and how we configure control plane Istio or XDS, whatever the case might be, and how the the individual proxies, sidecar proxies, are deployed have a huge impact on on the application and overall performance. And we see that and that's what we're trying to analyze too. Um, you know, change the configurations of sidecars to see what effects does it have on the core performance or IO performance, um, and how exactly we can tune that and with respect to filters or uh, with respect to what's happening in the control plane, how much can be um, leveraged by the control plane, right? So those are the things uh, we're looking at. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, even small variations of how we deploy uh, sidecars or, or your ingress proxy or front proxy as I um, uh, right, said, so sometimes uh, this might be case that friend proxy might do a lot of work uh, before it reaches the sidecar proxies. Right, so the how we deploy uh, and our environment can impact the performance quite a lot. Um, uh, I was to say one more point. Um, yeah, so yeah, definitely, and I agree with you. Uh, uh, you know, so control plane and this ones go hand in hand. So at, at least my our team's goal is. Um, uh, catering service mesh towards the telecom deployments. Uh, so looking at the 5G data plane uh, and how like how 5G network functions can leverage uh, service mesh. Uh, it's still in early days for, uh, in, in, from that perspective. Um, but um, yeah, so that's the ultimate goal where we're going towards. And so the networking becomes the biggest part of, uh, you know, so what's happening in the mesh, right? So the network uh, data plane and yeah, so uh, for sure, I agree with you that um, it, it has to be uh, very sensitive, both control plane and data plane has to coordinate together to reduce the impact of latency. Good. Well, uh, well, we've got an agenda teed up for, for next time. 
Um, Sunku sounds like we'll be able to catch up um, probably tomorrow. Um, yes. I love a meeting where I get to where Ken leaves with some action items. That's one of the my favorite meetings. Hey, not a problem, man. Uh, I was glad I could actually join a meeting for once and not at my um, my new company. That's something I can actually enjoy working on for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just need more winter storms and we'll... Uh, <laughs> um, well, nice. No, very good. Um, so, and I guess uh, we'll, we'll catch up in a couple of weeks. Um, and, uh, just, just to make you feel badly, we got about 12 inches in St. Louis, but the snow plows got it off the roads in about an hour and a half. And <laughs> we have no issues. We have no water problems. We have no, you know, everything's good here. You got to have to like get some snow plows down there. You guys have all these trucks. Just put some plows on the front. <laughs> I know. I know. It's more useful than a shotgun or a rifle in the winter time, you know. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's all, I don't know, it's all of like three inches over here. I don't know what. Uh, what you know. <laughs> I saw that in Austin, it never snow. It is never snowing. <laughs> well, St. Louis, we only get a couple of snows a year, but we still know how to handle it for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. Okay, biting my tongue. Biting my tongue. <laughs> I can send you some snow if you want for your water. I got tons out front. <laughs> And it's all white, all it's white. All white. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Oh, nice, nice to see you all. Uh, <laughs> see, see you in a couple of weeks. See you later. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. See you everybody.